Uh, uh, uh. Don't turn that dial. This is the right station if you want to hear about Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. On Christmas Day, when you find your toys, I wonder if any of you girls and boys will stop to think about Jonathan Thomas, the brave little boy who kept his promise. If it wasn't for him, the world would be sad on Christmas Day instead of so glad because, you see, poor old Santa Claus was stolen away and all because the wicked Squibblims hate Christmas cheer and decided there wouldn't be any this year. But Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon said we'll find Santa and bring him home soon. And it's plain to be seen that unless they do, there'll be no more toys for you and for you. So they jumped upon Gorgonzola the horse who said he would try to keep the right course, and away they went through the desert of sand on the dangerous road to Squeeboblium land. They passed through a country of giants and gnomes and the nightmare forest where the wild wind moans, past the dragon's cave and the home of the toad, and they never once got off of the road. But they've had such a time with a wicked old witch who rules o'er a land called Rumpelstitch. She's brewed much magic to bring them to harm, but the good fairy queen, she gave them a charm. She's their very great friend, and she's helped no end. And the little elf king, he gave them a key to a door in a wall, and quick as could be, they found themselves standing in looking glass land before good Queen Alice and her courtiers grand. Well, Queen Alice said, I'll help you out too, and this is exactly what I will do. I'll give you a whistle that will make you grow either up or down as you wish to go. Then... The wicked old witch, she laughed with glee, and she said, I'll change myself into a tree, and I'll plant myself in a lonely glade. They'll forget who they are when they come to my shade. But Kermit the hermit, he warned the three, so they stayed far away from the witch's tree. But soon they came to the pea soup fog, where it was cold and dark, and the ground like a bog, and they crept along like three little snails, till out came a dragon with thirteen tails. They must have gone too close to his den. But here's where the story begins again. All right, Jonathan Thomas, run like mad, or the dragon will catch you and you'll wish you had. But I'm so tired. I don't think I can run much farther. Then I'll carry you instead. And there's a house just ahead. And if we can hurry, we won't have to worry. But if we don't, we'll all be dead. Maybe the dragon got tired and quit chasing it. Mr. Man and the Moon... I don't hear him anymore. (laughs) Oh, yes, you do. But I'm still after you, running as fast as I can run. But I wish you'd go slow. It would please me so. For I've run so fast, I'm nearly done. Young one, Jonathan Thomas, let's hurry like everything till we reach that house. And then the dragon can't get us. I'm coming. As best as I can. I can't last if you run so fast. I'm nearly out of breath. I'm not so fast as I used to was. I'm getting old, that's why, because uh, I'm running myself to death. Here we are, Jonathan Thomas. Knock on that door. Hurry, quick. We better both knock. Hurry up and answer the gate. If you don't write quick, it'll be too late. Here comes the dragon. Oh, I saw it. By God. We are coming in. Coming in, Jonathan Thomas. Oh, oh, goodness gracious. The sakes alive. Just in the nick of time. Yes, just in the nick of time. Oh, I saw now. What's all this about? All this hammering and pounding. Why, it's putting me out. We're very sorry we had to rush in on you this way. And uh, whatever your name is. If it's me name you wants to know, I'll be glad to oblige you so. It starts with a D and ends with a Y. I-N-T in the middle, and I'll tell you why. The name's Dinty, don't you know? Dinty, we are very pleased to meet you, Mr. Dinty. Yes, we're very pleased to meet you, Mr. Dinty. Well, now, if you don't mind, would you be so kind as to explain yourself to me? Why, you pound on the door and strike me what's more, you've upset me pot of tea. We're very sorry, Mr. Dinty, if you please. 
But a terrible dragon was chasing it, and he said he was going to gobble us up. Yeah, and at the moment, <laughs> we didn't feel in the mood of being gobbled down like a ham sandwich on whole wheat toast. No. Well, strike me pink. Now, what do you think? So that old dragon was after you. Then I've no one to blame, and I'm glad you came. It's the proper thing to do. Do you suppose the dragon will wait outside for us to come out so she can gobble us up? I'll open the window, and then we'll know if that dragon is lurking about. He'll probably sit in the dithering fit, and then he'll start into pack. I've never heard of a dragon that out. Well, he does, I'll say, and if he can't have his way... Now, up with the window we go. Is he out there still? I say, Mr. Dragon, make yourself seen. Are you there, old chappy, old boy, old bean? <clears throat> Is he still there? I'm here, never fear. And here I'll stay till I come out of it forever and a day. Oh, come now, old dragon, old top I say. There's no need to wait, so go away and come again some other day. Ah, oh, now, Mr. Dindy, that's no way to be. I'm hungry. I'm starved. And you know me. Come on, Mr. Dindy, be a sport. Just give me the little boy, the one that's so short. The answer is no. So go on. Go, go, go. Ah, Mr. Dinty, don't be so mean. You're the stingiest tightwad I've ever seen. Come on now. Don't be so tight. I only want just a little bit. No. All right for you, then. After the kind of a friend to you I've been, all right for you. I guess we're through. So there. Well, by my hat, I'm glad of that. Gracious sakes to goodness. Whatever shall we do? We've got to go to the land of Squee Bubble, and we've got to hurry faster than fast. But how can we go? That's what I'd like to know. If that old dragon hangs around waiting for us. Yes, but we have to rescue Santa Claus. Well, by Jove, now, if that's a fact, I do declare we'll have to act. I say, I've thought of a thing to do. I've got some plum pudding that I'll give to you. Plum pudding? But what good will that do? To give to the dragon, for goodness sake. And when he eats it, he'll have a tummy ache. Goodness gracious, Whiffle Waffle. That's a wonderful idea. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. If it only works. It'll work, I'm sure. And there's no known cure, for it's made by my wife, and it's more than my life to eat it. Here, here, take the old pan, and go as quickly as you can, and when the dragon stops you, well, I suppose I needn't tell you what to do. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Dindy. Yep, yep. We are very much obliged. You're not as obliged as I. That's the truth, and nary a lie. It'll be the end of my life if my sweet little wife says, Dinty, eat up the plum pudding. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Well, we're glad to have helped you out, and now we'd better go. <laughs> and we'll fix that dragon till his tails will stop wagging. <laughs> yes, sir. Come on, Jonathan Thomas. Goodbye, Mr. Dandy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come back again sometime. We, we will. will. Now then, <laughs> I wonder where that dragon is. You needn't wonder where I'm at. Here I am and here I'm at. Just waiting and waiting and waiting for you. And now do you know what I'm going to do? No, we don't. But we'll probably soon find out. It's been some time since I've had a chance to dine. So now, I'm going to stop you for the entree, and you for dessert. I'm going to eat you. For gracious sakes to goodness. That's not very kind of you, but 
kindly is as kindly does. So I'll tell you what we'll do. <laughs> Everyone knows that your appetite grows if first you eat some plum pudding. Did you say plum pudding? Of course. Of course. Well, that's very kind of you. I don't mind if I do. Right here, if you please, Mr. Dragon. Your plum pudding. I love it so. And down my throat, it'll quickly go. Is it good, Mr. Dragon? <laughs> as good as it should. <laughs> it's the best I've ate. It's wonderful cake, and I... Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's the trouble? Oh, I've got the tummy ache. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan Thomas. Oh. Now's that chance to run. Oh, wait. Oh. wait, wait, wait. Till I'm over my tummy ache. <laughs> I've always been sorry when somebody got the tummy ache, but I am certainly not sorry that that old dragon got the tummy ache, because if he hadn't, what in the world would have happened to Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon? But say, I wonder what'll happen next. Don't forget to listen to the next story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the moon, will you? I won't. Mm-hmm.